Radicals with variables can be multiplied just like radicals with numerals. To multiply radicals with the same index, just multiply their radicands. This works for numbers, variables, or combinations of these. Just one thing about variables under a radical sign. If variables are under a radical sign with an even index, you must assume they represent non-negative real numbers. Another important thing, every time you multiply radicals, make sure to simplify any product that can be simplified. Let's do an example. We're asked to find the product of these two radicals containing numbers and variables. Because variables x and y are under a square root radical, we must assume they are non-negative. When we multiply two radicals, we multiply the radicands, so everything in the two radicals we're multiplying is now under one radical sign. Notice we group the numbers together, the x's together, and the y's together. 12 times 2 is 24. x squared times x cubed is x to the fifth, and y times y squared is y cubed. So we're left with this. Now we factor 24 into 4 times 6, x to the fifth into x to the fourth times x, and y to the third into y squared times y. Note that 4, x to the 4th, and y squared are all perfect squares. We'll group the perfect squares 4, x to the 4th, and y squared on the left side of the radical, and the leftovers 6, x, and y on the right side. Now we have this expression. We'll split it up into two separate square roots. The square root of the perfect squares and the square root of the leftovers. The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of x to the 4th is x squared, and the square root of y squared is y. The square root of 6xy cannot be simplified, so we just bring it down here. So the final answer is 2x squared y times the square root of 6xy. Here's the whole solution to this problem. If you like, you can pause the video and review this. Let's do another example. We're asked to find this product and simplify the answer. Notice we have cube root radicals. Because these have an odd index, we don't need to assume the variables are positive. We use the distributive property to clear the brackets and give us this expression. Notice we multiply both terms inside the bracket by the cube root of 9a squared b, which was outside the bracket. Now we find the product of each term by multiplying the radicands in each term and grouping them to get this expression. Now we simplify this. Looking at the first term, 9 times 9 is 81, a squared times a to the 4th is a to the 6th, and b times b squared is b cubed. And looking at the second term, 9 is just 9, a squared times a cubed is a to the 5th, and b times b squared is b cubed. So we're left with this expression. We'll factor 81 to 27 times 3, and a to the 5th to a to the 3rd times a squared. Note that 27 and a cubed are both perfect cubes. Now we're left with this. Looking at the first term, we'll group the perfect cubes, 27, a to the sixth, and b cubed, on the left side, and the leftover 3 on the right side of this radical. Looking at the second term, we'll group the perfect cubes, a cubed and b cubed, on the left side of this radical, and the leftovers, 9 times a squared on the right side of the radical, which gives us this expression. Now we'll split both of the cube roots into separate cube roots of perfect cubes in green and cube roots of leftovers in blue. Looking at the first term, the cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of a to the sixth is a squared, and the cube root of b cubed is b. And the leftover, the cube root of 3, is just written beside it. Looking at the second term, the cube root of a cubed is a, and the cube root of b cubed is b. And we'll write the cube root of the leftover, 9a squared, here beside it. This is the final answer to this question. Here's the whole solution to this problem. If you like, you can pause the video and review this. This process also works for higher roots. This problem involves fourth roots. We're asked to find this product. Because a fourth root is an even index, we must assume that the variables x and y must be non-negative values. We'll start by multiplying the numbers 2 times 3. 
Next, we'll multiply the radicands in each radical and combine them under a single radical sign, giving us this expression. 2 times 3 equals 6. And we'll rearrange the values under the radical so the numbers are together, the x's are together, and the y's are together. 8 times 2 is 16. x cubed times x to the 9th is x to the 12th. And y to the 7th times y to the 10th is y to the 17th. So now we have this expression. Notice the fourth root of 16 is a perfect fourth root and the fourth root of x to the twelfth is a perfect fourth root, but the fourth root of y to the seventeenth is not. But y to the seventeenth can be factored to y to the sixteenth times y, and the fourth root of y to the sixteenth is a perfect fourth root. So we're left with this expression. We'll separate the single fourth root radical into the fourth root of sixteen x to the twelfth y to the sixteenth times the fourth root of y. The fourth root of 16 is 2, the fourth root of x to the 12th is x cubed, and the fourth root of y to the 16th is y to the 4th. The fourth root of y cannot be simplified, so we just write it down here the way it is, giving us this expression. This can be simplified a bit more. 6 times 2 equals 12. So this is the final answer to this question. We'll show you the whole question so you can review the steps you need to go through to solve a problem like this. If you like, you can pause the video and review these steps.